Hi friend, recently I became interested in welding machines and even made a converter. The full process of assembly, adjustments and tests has already been published on the channel. I recommend for viewing, all the links are in the description. Seeing this video, a friend asked me to let him work with homemade welding device and was surprised by the steady ignition and softness of the arc. After that, he brought his factory welding machine and asked me to remake it the same as mine. This is a topic for a separate video and soon I will show how this factory inverter was remade. I felt that I will have to deal with welding devices many times, so it was decided to create a test bench to check the characteristics of inverters and for their adjustment. The problem is that on the factory inverters, the current indicator doesn't always show the true value. Often these are just numbers far from reality. Everything will become clear later. Earlier in the flea market, I bought ballast resistance. These are used to adjust the current in transformer welding machine. In our case, it will be as load resistance. By the way, for your project, you can order printed circuit boards at the lowest prices and as soon as possible on the website of the company GLC. Just download the source Gerber file, select the options you need and that's all. The company has many years of experience and can make boards of any complexity, size and number of layers. The company uses only high quality equipment for the production of boards, so the quality is without complaints. A link to the GLC website can be found in the description. The principle of operation of our test bench is very simple. The ballast resistance is connected to the output of the welding inverter. We have two dial gauges, ammeter and voltmeter. When the inverter is loaded, the ammeter will show the real current at the output. The voltmeter will show the voltage under load. As a rule, it should be in the area from 24 to 28 volts, a little less or more. Also, we can connect the voltmeter without loading the inverter output in order to check the no load voltage. If the voltage at the inverter output is lower than 30 to 40 volts, the arc will probably be badly ignited, but if it is higher than 70 volts, this is already dangerous for the welder. If you need a more detailed analysis, for example measuring the efficiency, how much the inverter consumes from the mains, get the volt ampere characteristics and so on, then a wattmeter and an oscilloscope can be connected to this test stand. In short, it is possible to make a complete analysis. I think it is clear that when connected to a welding inverter, our test bench turns into a very powerful heater since all the power turns into heat on the ballast resistance. For example, if the inverter produces 100 amperes, taking into account the voltage, this is already 2 kilowatt of heat. Ballast, of course, will warm up. And so, in the future, maybe I will add a powerful fan. The basis of the test stand is a door from old furniture. Under the ballast resistor, I glued a couple of ceramic tiles, because the ballast will highly heat up. I glued tiles with epoxy resin. It can withstand temperatures of up to 150 degrees Celsius. But further experiments have shown that the tiles almost not heat up, because contact area with ballast resistance is small. The power wires are copper, almost all connections made by a double wire of 16 square millimeter. It's equal to 5 American wire gouge. This will completely eliminate the heating of the wires at high currents. All connections are made using power tint copper terminal. The wire is simply clamped. I wanted to solder first, but in some places the heating is high and the solder can melt. For the same reason, I removed the insulation from the wires. After ending of the project, the wires were coated with clear varnish, so that over time they wouldn't lose their original shine. Indicators I had arrow type voltmeters with the same characteristics, but they need to be redone. Voltmeters are at 40 volts. I needed to turn one of the voltmeters into an ammeter for a current of at least 200 amperes, and leave the second as a voltmeter but remake it to measure the voltage up to 100 volts. Fortunately, I had chance for 100 amperes with a drop of 75 millivolt. Connected them in parallel, I got a 200 ampere shunt. It remained only to rework the dial gouge itself. In series with the ballast, I connected the shunt and parallel to the shunt the measuring head. 
In fact, the head will measure the voltage drop across the shunt. Then I took current tongs, they can measure direct current and will be used as a reference meter. Although they only measure current up to 100 amperes, that's enough. I connected the welding inverter. By rotating the current regulator on the inverter, I made markings on the scale at currents of 50 and 100 amperes. On this, it becomes clear what current value corresponds to one division on the indicator. Based on the obtained values, a new scale was created. Everything is simple. You need to remove the old scale, scan, to work in the editor, set the desired size, print and glue the homemade scale in the place of the factory. Before collect the ammeter, we need to check the accuracy of the readings. In our case, as we see, everything is very good. The readings are accurate. Here, the difference of several amperes isn't critical at all. As for the voltmeter, it has three pins at the rear side. It will measure the DC voltage either up to 20 volts or up to 40 volts. I decided not to redo the voltmeter. If you use 20 volt scale, then we just need to connect in series a resistor to the indicator with which the full arrow deflection corresponds to a voltage of 200 volts. That is, by multiplying the reading of the upper scale by 10, we obtain the real value of the voltage. Each division is 5 volts. This is convenient and without problems. I have already shown the full process of remaking and adjusting of arrow voltmeters in one of the past videos. Who cares? The link is in the description. As connect points, we have 5 screw bolts, 2 upper, R+, plus, lower pair, ground or minus. The middle bolt will be used only when it is necessary to measure the no-load voltage of the inverter. The middle bolt through the Schottky diode is connected to one of the upper bolts. A diode must be with a current of about 1 ampere and a reverse voltage of 100 to 200 volts. Well, now let's test our inverter. The test will not be full, we just estimate its output characteristics. Ideal voltage is about 65 to 70 volts. Then we load the device. Here it is important at first connect the ballast and only then plug it into the mains to prevent damaging your eyes with a bright flash. By smoothly increasing of the current on the welding machine, we see that the readings of the built-in indicator are far from real. And this is a very common phenomenon. The stated maximum current of this inverter is 180 amperes, but in fact it gives no more than 150 amperes. If you load more, the output voltage will fall below 15 volts. We can tune it and even calibrate the indicator. On the complete refinement will be a separate video. The minimum output current is 39 amperes. I thought it would be less, but even despite such an impressive current, the arc ignites with difficulty. I must solve this drawback and also provide a shorter ignition of the arc. This is due to the fact that the currents below 70 amperes, the output voltage drops out quite strongly and it is problematic to start an arc. A higher current values, everything is fine. The inverter doesn't have anti-stick function, which in theory should reduce the current if the electrode is stuck. To check, I close the inverter output through the ammeter by passing the ballast resistance. I didn't notice a decrease in power. Such an inverter is definitely worth refining and adjusting. I will not check the maximum constant load, but if you want, I can release a separate video in which I will show the complete process of checking welding inverters with the help of such a stand and a luxury equipment. I was testing the inverter for a long time. Now, given the output voltage and current, more than 4000 watts of power are dissipated on the ballast resistor. In fact, it is the heater of 4 kilowatts. The heat is indescribable. The varnish on wires began partially to burn. This is all today. All necessary links will be found in the description. Please don't forget to rate this video, subscribe to my Instagram. If you have any questions, you can ask them in our official group. Links are in the description. Now I have to say goodbye. Until we meet again, with you was Kasyan TV.